Well, I, I suppose the thing that has been obsessing me for quite a few years is where does creativity come from? Where does intelligence come from? And I'm more and more convinced it comes out of communities rather than, as we tend to think, out of individuals. It comes out of a whole sort of quagmire, a whole ecology of thinking and doing. Um, some of it looks like intellectual work, some of it doesn't, but it's what produces new ideas. So, so I, I often say now that um, <clears throat> new ideas are usually articulated by one person, but they're nearly always generated by a lot of people. And we tend to reward that one person at the expense of the, of the other people. I've been a beneficiary of that reward system, but I'm more and more suspicious of it. And do you think that the individual, the interaction of the individual with groups of people is the crucial part there? I'm thinking about the band, uh, the way a rock band works, the world that you work in. What is that interaction? Well, it's very interesting. I, I often use the word chemistry, which is a word everybody uses, but, but I mean it in a very literal sense. If you take iron, 100% iron, you have iron, there's something that's brittle, heavy, and so on. If you add 4% of carbon to it, you get something called steel, and that's a quite different material. And very often the chemistry of bands is like that, that there's one person who makes a lot of noise and seems to be the leader. And there's very often one other person who doesn't make very much noise, but actually is equally indispensable. And I find that's true in all sorts of social situations as well. One of, one of the things that came to interest me was those creative situations called salons, which very much were part of the late 19th century and the early 20th century. Salons were nearly always large groups of people, many of whom don't remain in the history books, but actually were part of the ecology, including particularly the hostesses who usually were putting these salons on and bringing people together. Mrs. Dalloway. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Yanis, come on. The individual and ideas and creativity and solutions. Listening to uh, Brian, by the way, when we are on our own, we usually have the same kind of conversation. So either we're very interesting or we're ex exceedingly boring. Uh, <laughs> Narrow-minded. <laughs> <laughs> we do. This is the kind of thing we're talking about. You know? yeah, yeah. Why do people make art? This is something that you know, we've, we've spent hours talking about. Uh, regarding the individual, Allow me to um, come to the subject from my own trauma of being an economist. Because anybody who has had the tough luck of having studied economics, even very little economics, you will recall that uh, the first page of the or, you know, introductory textbook defines uh, the rational person, homo economicus. Uh, it, it's always a he, because only a male could be so deprived <laughs> and depraved. Uh, so the, 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 the individual is defined in economics as a bundle of preferences, mm -hmm. seeking uh, satisfaction, uh, given constraints. And you're rational to the extent that you maximize your preference satisfaction given the amount of money you have, what other people who appear in the scene of economic theory as an obstacle. So community, mm -hmm. instead of being empowering, is, you know, is what Jean-Paul Sartre used to say, other people are hell. Uh, but he meant it in an existentialist way. The economists actually mean it literally. Um, <laughs> now, this is, of course, you know, effectively, what you have is um, a Robinson Crusoe approach to the economy. If you look at, look at the Bank of England's econometric models, that the Bank of England uses in order to predict inflation, unemployment, you know, Brexit, as if they can ever predict what will happen with Brexit, uh, given that there is a sample of zero <laughs> to work with. But anyway, so all these models are predicated upon the assumption that the economy is founded on Robinson Crusoe and his clones. They have no relationship except that through the market mechanism, so buying and selling. Uh, no one influences anyone. Uh, there's no money and there's no debt. Because you cannot have money without a community. It's like language. Remember what Wittgenstein used to say? 
there can be no such thing as a private language. Language is something we create together. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a single person on the planet and you've grown up on your own, there's no way you can have a language um, unless somebody taught it to you. So this rather sad depiction of the individual, which by the way is a savage, uh, is at the heart of the way in which mainstream economics thinks about the world. And one may ask the question, so why is this the case? Are they uh, not philosophically um, sophisticated enough? No, the answer is that there's a lot of money in it. Because the whole point about mainstream economics is to justify capitalism. Mm -hmm. And capitalism justifies itself on the basis of the fiction that wealth is something that is produced individually. And then the state comes and taxes it when it's exactly the opposite. Mm -hmm. Wealth is produced socially, collectively, and then it's privatized. So um, this juxtaposition, juxtaposition between the individual and the collective, this is a f the dominant ideology which supports profit making and a particular kind of class structure. Um, it's, it's the sermons, it's the, the religion, it's the theory. It's, it plays exactly the same role that in the Middle Ages the bishop played in legitimizing the power of the emperor, of the lord, of the baron, of the king. Um, and what we need to do, in the, we need to dissolve it. And Brian, Brian gave me a fantastic example, uh, fantastic, not example, idea of how this is dissolved. Uh, think about the, the economist's model of competition, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's a bit like a kind of Olympic sport where you know, my victory is your loss. But a far more interesting model of what happens in the world is the band, where you know, you've know you got highly individualistic people, usually, mm -hmm. on, the screen, on the stage. Uh, but what's going on is while at the same time, each one of them trying to prove to the audience and to each other and to themselves that they're the best of the launch, uh, unless there is the chemistry, unless there is the synergy, each one of them just creates noise. Mm 